Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to talk about the composition process. How to combine several images in one painting. Often as a portrait artist I've been asked to put together several photographs in one composition to create an image that didn't happen in real life. In this video I want to show you an example of where I've had to do that. Make use of several different photo references using different elements from each one to make the painting work. So if you enjoy this here then please do hit the subscribe button here on YouTube and also consider checking me out on Patreon where you'll gain access to my full catalogue of tutorials. Often when I'm asked to create a portrait with multiple subjects it just won't be possible to get one photo reference where everyone is looking the way they need to look. The wonderful thing about painting a portrait is artistic license. You can make things happen in a portrait that did not happen in real life. And if you work with animals and children, that can be valuable. In this piece, I was asked to create a triple portrait and my clients sent me some great photographs. On the occasion where the subjects are still available to photograph, it is possible to get the right photos to make a good collage from. I always make sure to talk with my client before and give them some good tips if they are the ones taking the photographs. My main two tips in this case are to photograph all of the animals from the same height. So if you were down on your knees looking up at the animal for the first one, then you need to do that for all of the animals that you're photographing. And the second one is to make sure that the lighting is coming from roughly the same direction in all of the photographs. So if the sunlight is hitting the first dog directly on the left side of their face, make sure that that same sunlight is hitting all of the subjects on the same side. And with those two simple tips alone, you can almost guarantee that you'll get workable photographs. It's always much easier to piece together head and shoulder shots. It becomes extra complicated when you try to include the whole body, the legs and the feet. Getting all the animals to look grounded within the same scene and make it appear natural is more difficult. These are a few examples of where I've included all of the dog's full bodies. It was difficult to scale them from separate photos and to place them within the perspective here that it looked natural. But with head and shoulders only, you have a bit more room for error. Here are a few examples of that. One where I had access to two of the dogs for photographing, but the middle dog had passed away. I did my best with the poor quality photo in the middle, and I tried to create the composition using the outer dogs to frame the middle one. And I've also done this with people portraits. If I was doing this one again, I might include some idea of the chair that they are on and darken the shadows in between them. But all of these compositions can be sometimes a bit tricky and it's just not always possible if you're relying on poor photo reference. You can see from these photographs though that my client did a great job. The animals are photographed in good lighting which is consistent in all the shots. They managed to photograph them in a similar area of the garden and kept the perspective of each animal pretty similar, i.e. they're pretty much at eye level with each of the dogs. With those ingredients I was sure I could create a photo composite to guide me. I like to do this as I can play about with the scale of each dog, I can experiment with layering them slightly and it gives me a chance to plan the composition and the background before making a start. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I did that using Photoshop, the editing software that I normally use. And I'll also give you another demo on a piece of free software just to compare. I'm aware that I talk about Photoshop quite a lot because that's what I normally use but you don't necessarily have to pay for editing software. One thing that you do need to create collages to be able to cut and paste is something called layers. So within your editing software, you need to be able to build up the layers um, and 
layer them on top of each other individually. And that's something that you might not get with all of the free softwares, but today I will show you one where you can do that. So let's jump straight into that now with the Photoshop demo. So this is my project open in Photoshop, and I'm gonna show you how I got from my three photos to the photo layout that I sent to my client and that I used to sketch out from. So I've got another file open that is the size of the painting I want to create, which is 19 by 12 inches. And now in Photoshop, I can use the lasso tool here. I'm just going to set the feathering to five just to leave a, a slightly soft edge on what I select. And then I'm gonna select around each of the dog's head and shoulders. So I'll not show you this entire process. It takes a little bit of patience and I'm doing it really roughly here just to show you. When I'm doing this as a proper final layout for a client, I will put a little bit more effort in and make it as neat as I can. But just for the purposes of this, I'm leaving the edges pretty rough here. So I just wanna copy and paste each head and shoulders from each of the dogs into my new file. So this is where it's important to have the ability to build up the layers. You can see the new layers popping up in the little box over to the right of the screen each time I bring another dog's head and shoulders into the project. So this ability to be able to cut and paste individual items and then play around with them is something that I've done in Photoshop for many years and many of the free softwares don't allow this kind of functionality. But as I mentioned, I will show you a free software after this that does. So now I can resize the dogs and start to place them next to each other. The trick with resizing is to, well, most of the time I go by eye, but there are some little measurements that I do as I go along to try and make sure that the dogs are in scale with each other. It can also be useful if your client can send you some photographs where the dogs are actually together, especially if they're different breeds, because as you saw from some of my earlier examples, I don't always have three of the same breed to work with, and that's certainly easier because they'll be more similar in size, but it's still good to have a photograph of the three dogs together, which I did have from my client as well. So I can play about with their positions, I can put one in front of the other. When the dogs are a similar breed like this, sometimes I make use of their noses to help me scale the three of them together. So here I'm just measuring their noses and comparing just their noses within the composition. And that's a very rough way of scaling them by eye, which is possible when the dogs are very similar. So now to add some idea of background, which I also like to do in many of my layouts. It's not always necessary, but in this case, I did want to test out some colors. I really loved the green colors that were behind them in the photo references. And I decided just to give myself an idea of what that might look like behind all three, to just take a little section from that green area and then paste it in as the background in my composition. So it doesn't matter if it doesn't look quite right, it's literally just here to give me and my client an idea of what the green background might look like. It also gives me a chance to try out what that might look like in my painting if I made it, for example, a bit lighter, which is what I ended up doing in my actual painting. So I can test these things out here and see how that might look. So here I'm just adjusting the brightness. Maybe I'll take down the vibrance or the saturation as well. And it starts to look a bit more like my painting. So one other tweak that I made to this composition was to the third dog, the one on the far right. In the original photograph of this dog, it was a little bit askew, so the photo was at a little bit of an angle, and I knew when I saw that that it would be very easily fixed. So you can just see here from the original photo, it's slightly tilted or leaning. So I decided to just straighten that dog up a little bit in the composition. It wasn't completely necessary, but I noticed it a little bit off in the original photo, and it was very easy to fix in my layout. So let's have a look now at the free software that I've been mentioning, and it's called GIMP. 
and I'll add a link to this and to Photoshop in the description below. But it's quite a similar layout. In fact, if you've used any of the Adobe products before, like Photoshop, then you'll get the hang of this one quite quickly. But for that reason, it is almost as complicated as Photoshop, so you probably will need some tutorials if you're just starting out with this sort of thing. So for me, it's a better idea to learn Photoshop because I'm likely to use many of the Adobe editing softwares and many of them are very similar. But if you're going to invest the time in learning one of the softwares, it's still useful to pick up one like this. So I can do exactly the same as I did before, bringing each head and shoulders in. The tools are similar. I have to go and search for them a little bit and figure out the layout, which is a little bit different from Photoshop. But the fantastic thing is with a free bit of software like this, you actually have got everything, pretty much everything that you've got on Photoshop. I've got these layers to the right, just like on Photoshop, and I can literally cut and paste into separate layers and then move them around. And on this software, you've also got many of the filters like uh, the blur filters, Gaussian blur, which I make use of a lot. You've got many, many of the same things that you've got on Photoshop. So it really is a fantastic bit of software if you don't want to invest the money in any of the Adobe products. So I've just done exactly the same thing, cut and paste each head and shoulders. I haven't really taken my time with this one. And because I don't normally use GIMP, it is a software that I'm not completely familiar with. So I did get a little bit lost along the way, but it wouldn't take very long coming from Adobe Photoshop to figure this one out. So if you're willing to put in a little bit of study and watch some tutorials and figure out how to use this software, it is definitely worth getting, seeing as how it's absolutely free. So my finished layout doesn't end up quite the same, but I know that if I sat and tweaked this the way I did on Photoshop, that I would get to the same end product. So I hope it's been helpful to see this process both on Photoshop and on GIMP, which you can download for free. There's a little bit of a learning curve in any software where you've got such advanced functionality like this. But I truly would be lost without these editing softwares and I really do make use of them in every part of my work. And another edit that I had to do within this painting was to work a little bit on one of the dog's eyes from other photo reference. So I wanted to show you here just quickly how I used other photo reference to return this dog's eyes to before his glaucoma set in. My client had a very similar angle of the dog in a slightly younger photograph. I used this view to sketch out the eyes from and then while I was working on that part of the dog's face, I had my photo reference on screen like this. I could directly compare the eyes and make the adjustments needed in my painting. So whether or not you choose to spend money on editing software, I highly recommend that you get to grips with at least one version of it and make use of this in your compositional stages of your paintings. It's common to have to make edits like this within portraiture painting and using computer editing is a great way to both visualize it for you and also a great way to let the client see a rough layout of what their finished painting might look like. For example, in this case, I included my client in this process and they agreed to the final layout before I started the painting. People sometimes ask why an artist would work from photographs. Why would you want to copy something that already exists? Now I have a whole other video on that topic, which I'll link to at the end, but I would say that one of the most valuable ways you can work with photographs is when you take several ingredients and melt them all together in your painting to create a vision of reality that didn't actually exist. It's artistic vision that makes it happen, but for me, it's computer editing that helps me to get that vision onto the paper. So just remember, matching perspective and lighting are key elements for photos that are suitable to turn into a collage. 
unless you're going for something stylistically different. But to achieve realism, those two ingredients really must match throughout the photo references that you're mixing. I hope this has been helpful and that it helps you out next time you've got to stitch together a more complicated composition. It's something that I love to do for my clients and I love the end result where you can come up with three perfectly posed subjects who would have never sat still long enough for a photograph. If you've enjoyed this then please do remember to subscribe to me here on YouTube and also consider checking me out on my Patreon channel where for a very small subscription monthly you gain access to my full back catalogue of tutorials as well as everything that I release each month. We've got a fantastic community growing over there with lots of artists supporting each other on their journeys. So I hope you'll come and join us. But thanks very much for watching this here and until next time, happy pastling.